The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome on this Sunday next before Lent. Yes, Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday and Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, is the start of Lent. We will be having a service on Ash Wednesday which will also be broadcast on this channel. But for now, we're still in green for ordinary time and we skip forward in Mark's Gospel to a glimpse of glory. The reading is taken from chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, a glimpse of glory indeed. We know that Jesus went up the mountain frequently to pray. We're quite often told that. But this is the only time he seems to take disciples with him. And... What they witness is incredible. We have no idea if this is what happened every time Jesus went to pray. I do wonder why he took them though on this particular occasion. It seems to mark a sort of pivotal moment. He has just told them for the first time that he's going to have to go to Jerusalem and die. And Peter has said, no, 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 you can't do that. Jesus has actually rebuked Peter really sternly. Get me behind me, Satan. But now they see something just amazing. But Peter is as Peter does. Peter is one of the most human of the disciples. He seems to put his foot in it, whatever he does and wherever he goes which doesn't mean that he doesn't get things stunningly right occasionally. He is also the first one to say, you are the Messiah to Jesus. Which prompts Jesus to say, you are the rock on which I'll build my church. But then he goes and gets it wrong again. And it's just kind of strange what he says here. Let us build three dwellings for you. We do know that he didn't know what to say, and we do know that it was not what Jesus was wanting, because it's ignored, and they're overshadowed by a cloud, and they hear for the second time the voice of God. The first was at Jesus' baptism, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased, we get that time, but this time we get listen to him. We could all learn from that. And Peter jumps straight in, as he so often does, with both feet. Peter is the, the one of the disciples who just always seems to put his nets down on the wrong side of the boat. He's the one who denies Jesus. He's the one who puts all of his clothes on in order to jump into the water where I guess most people would actually take them off. He is the one who misunderstands the foot washing and wants his whole self washed. Impetuous Peter who slices off a slave's ear 
which Jesus heals again. And Peter, who falls asleep with, again, James and John, when told to keep awake and watch. He is very human. And when he is faced with things outside his experience, he really doesn't know what to do with them. Oh, goodness me, can we relate to that now? We are all faced with a situation that is outside of our experience. It is tough. Staying indoors is not something that it feels like human beings were built to do. We're social creatures. We are missing each other. We are missing sometimes those we love most who we can't even see. We are missing our normal social activities. And we are having a very instinctive response, which is not to know what to do, not to trust in God, to sometimes speak out of turn, I know I do. We are, with Peter, very human. And yet, perhaps that very humanness in this reading today, the sort of slightly strange, off-the-wall off response, is what we can take most from at this time. Peter represents humanity at our lovable, disheartening best. He has an instinctive, most innocent response to life. The passage at the end of the Gospel of John, where he is with Peter, he is with Jesus rather, and Jesus says to him, do you love me? He can say yes with all his heart, perhaps cancelling out those times when he denied that he even knew Jesus. This is Peter at the Transfiguration, getting it wrong again. But God speaks. God says, listen to him. This is my son, listen to him. And that, I'm sure, is the message for us today. We are down. It is difficult, but we are told to listen to God. God in all his glory. Peter the buffoon perhaps represents each one of us. Jesus loves him. Jesus loves all of us in all our muddling through, in all our struggling, in all our getting it wrong. We try. I don't know about you, I thought at the beginning of this latest lockdown maybe I'd try and make better use of it. Maybe I would do more reading. Maybe I would tidy up. A look at my house, a look at the pile of books by my bed suggests that I have failed. Like Peter, I mean well, but perhaps it doesn't happen that way. And perhaps the best we can do is bumble on through and keep turning back to God, the God who loves us. And that brings to mind one of my favourite prayers, a poem prayer from the Trappist monk Thomas Merton, and I'm going to share it with you now. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I'm following your will does not mean I'm actually doing so. But I believe the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. And I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. 
Amen. And so let us pray for and with those who've especially asked for our prayers today, who too are struggling to find God. We pray for healing of body, mind and spirit for Anne Armstrong, Mary Tragheim, Jane and Laura Peachy, Sandra and all the Marshall family, Laura, little Henry, the Conway family, Jean Winch, Gillian Watkins, Caroline and all the Jordan family, Marion Dennis, Sue Petty, Ross and Billy and all the Francis family, Catherine and all the Allen family, Irina, Evo and Joanna, Rachel Kerridge, Ken Peterson, Cynthia Davis, Anne Dempsey, Rita Benwell, Mandy Nash, Loges Rajaratnam, James Brokenshire, Martin Whittekind, Diana Richards, Mike Davis and family, Pam Payton, Angela Hampton, Liz Knight, Mildred Tunbridge, Al and Angie Wessel, Pam Thompson, Peter and Linda Green and family, Andrew Pierce, Norman Fortune, Lord, while praying for those in a special need of your care at this time, we do also give thanks for those who have received healing in whatever form needed. For Wesley Cheshire, Margaret Miller, Dee Majowski, Philip Knight Stevenson, Adam, Alex and Daniel Cantipudi, Peter Knight, Eukarya Asegbu and Chaz Owen. And Lord, we remember those gone before us to be with you. We remember Trevor Curry, Lisa Smith, Fiona Gibson, Sue Jensen, Jim Riches, Robert Griffiths, Kenneth Green, David Holman, and all whom we have loved and lost who we hold in our hearts today. Amen. We finish our prayers this morning by praying together as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and everyone you love, living and departed, now and forevermore. Amen.